Welcome to Lesson 12, Dinks, Dual Income, No Kids. What a great situation to be in. If you have joined together in holy matrimony, for better or for worse, for richer or for poorer, you are now in the richer stage, and the goal is to remain that way till death do you part. Proverbs 13, 16 says, wise couples think before they act. Fools don't, and even brag about their foolishness. Proverbs 13.20 says, Walk with the wise and become wise. Associate with fools and get in trouble. Robin and I were young and foolish when we married in 1973. I had moved out at 17 and married at the age of 21. Robin was 20. Harry Wallop, consumer affairs editor for The Telegraph, in the United Kingdom writes the average age at which women get married climbed to 30 years in 2009. Figures published by the Office for National Statistics. The average age for women to get married in 1981 was 23.1. The year Lady Diana Spencer had just turned 20 and married in the royal family to Prince Charles. Catherine Middleton, Katie, in contrast, was 29 when married to Prince William in the latest royal wedding. The average age of men has climbed from 25.4 in 1981 to 32.1 in 2009. Unfortunately, this also confirms the long-running decline in the institution of marriage. Fewer people were married in 2009 than in any year since figures started to be recorded in 1895. Now, this is the UK. There are pros and cons to getting married later. Pro, you can have an established job and have all school debt paid off. Con, one or both of you could be buried in debt. The average school loan debt in 2010 is $25,250, according to Susan Reimer of the Baltimore Sun. Robin and I were dinks for eight years, and for many of those years, were trinks, triple income, no kids. In addition to teaching and coaching, I sold real estate and taught driver's training. I am lucky to still be alive today. We did not take advantage of this opportunity instead lived well beyond our means. We drove a Porsche and a BMW and lived in Mission Viejo, California. We needed every bit of our three incomes to make the payments. Our only savings for retirement was my Cal Sturz teacher pension and they auto deducted from my salary. Thank heavens. If you don't have money deducted for your future, then do it now. When our first child arrived eight years into our marriage and Robin quit working, we struggled big time and ended up tapping into our home equity and using credit cards. Can any of you relate? That is why the advice you're going to get is from our 29-year-old daughter, Corey, and her husband, Ben. Here is their game plan. How to stay richer. You are now dual income with no kids, but there soon may be a day when that is not the case. Several situations may change your status. Kids may come. One spouse may choose not to work, or heaven forbid, one or both of you may lose your job. The way to prepare for this is to live in the dink stages of your life as if you were a single income family. From the first day of marriage, always live within your means and destroy all current debt. You need to work together on needs versus wants and should be able to sustain all large purchases on one income. Living on one income, as everyone's goals are different 
it is necessary to sit down with your spouse and talk about what you want in the future for your family. Hopefully you talked about this before you went, but it is never too late to start. Corey and Ben wanted to eventually start a family and purchase their home as if they were a single income family. If they could not pay cash for something, that meant they could not afford it, even cars. They both paid off school loans and their only debt is their two mortgages. One is rented for well over the payment and almost paid off. There is very little risk associated with living a debt-free life. Corey is now ready for motherhood when she separates from the Air Force in March of 2012 and they lose one of their incomes. Times to cheat. Month to month, you should be able to save one spouse's entire income. As there are many times in every diet where you should be allowed cheat days, the same goes with savings as dates. On average, live on one income. But when there is something you really want, allow yourselves to indulge on occasion, as long as you can pay cash for that item. There is no reason to not reward yourselves for hard work. Remember why you marry each other in the first place and support each other's passions. Corey and Ben find pleasure in the great outdoors, boating, competing in triathlons, working out, rock climbing, and photography. And with these hobbies come expensive equipment. Staying healthy is important, and they believe together these have been worthwhile purchases, but still maintain a debt-free standard of living with the exception of the mortgage. In conclusion, dinks have a tough task. It is easy to live large like Robin and I, big hat with no cattle, but you need to live responsibly and set yourselves up for future success. Live on one income. Always live within your means. Destroy your debt with that second or third income. Have a three to six month emergency fund. Enjoy the lifestyle while you can. They say it costs $300,000 to raise a child in 2011. Proverbs 15:22. Plans go wrong for lack of advice. Many advisors bring success. Next lesson, we'll be having some fun with kids still on the payroll, the boomerang generation. Are you a graduate from college and still living with your parents? Are you a parent with your 27-year-old still living at home? We have some humorous suggestions for your situation next week. And now for the Debt-Free Squad Challenge of the Week. If you are not a dink, please forward this video to everyone you know in this situation. If you are a trink, dink, or dinky, no kids yet, then sit down with your spouse and get on a spend every penny budget. Pay off your debt. Get a three to six month emergency fund. And cut up the credit cards. One word, communicate. Leave a comment or like us on Facebook and we will see you next week.